at some point you're going to struggle with something that you're drawing and there's some tools and and techniques that you can use to help yourself out um you know the first thing that you're going to do always is just draw something and you know i know a lot of people like to measure first before they draw but i don't think that's that fun um and i think it's easier to develop your instinct if you draw first um when I draw objects, I actually like to pick up the objects and feel them, feel how heavy they are, um, measure any alignments on the object, notice details, look at the way things are inset really closely, and then put it back down in its place and, and draw from there. Um, I feel like that translates in sort of some kind of uh, subconscious way. Um, when you measure, you're going to hold your arm out at arm's length perfectly straight so you can come back to that distance and you're going to have plant in one position and you're going to move your thumb along your drawing instrument and sight out some distances and take notes of what you measure and you're going to kind of use the same unit each time that you try to measure um, so that you can come back and get accuracy throughout the entire stage of the drawing and then you're going to take notes um, I like to keep either in my sketchbook or just on the edge of the paper um, some of those ratios. So what I measured was the width against the overall height and the width is basically one unit. So it was one and one third unit from the width to the overall height and when you measure something you're looking for the overall height usually. Um, so these measurements came really close and that's fine. A lot of times it's not going to be so close um, even if you're uh, very experienced in drawing and it's no big deal to kind of make changes when that sort of thing happens um, this is just kind of part of the process the next stage is to measure and refine um, you know the different the difference in moving two feet forward to kind of record this video versus back where I was next to the easel, change the measurements entirely. So um, you got to be kind of sure that you stand in the same spot every time. Um, and once you measure, there's some self-checking guidelines you can do. With cylinders, it's pretty simple. Um, the same thing, and it goes for any sort of um, cylindrical object, cone, sphere, whatever. You can check uh, vertical and horizontal axes, and that's one of the first things that you want to do. Um, and that defines your sort of symmetry. You can also check your ellipses. An ellipse is symmetrical in all four quadrants, and you should be able to take any one quadrant and flip it around, and it should match all the other four quadrants. Um, and you also want to check that your top and bottom ellipse agrees with each other. Typically, in, in drawing objects, you can just use the exact same ellipse um, or something very similar if it's like a cone or, or something like that. And then if you're drawing boxes and stuff, definitely the main one is going to be horizontal and vertical lines. Um, you just want to make sure that they're, that the horizontals are perfectly straight across and the verticals are perfectly straight up. And I do that by checking against the edge of the paper. Um, the other thing that you want to do is check your um, shadow alignments. You, you want to make sure that your shadow is emanating properly from the shadow core and that it's emanating from the proper spot on the back. And on a cylinder, you use tangent lines to do that, and you make sure that the shadow goes right across the center of that bottom ellipse. Because otherwise, you get a shadow that's kind of coming out from the middle of nowhere, and you have no idea if it's related to the object at all. And that happens so many times, especially when you kind of start to shortcut the process. Um, so I hope that helps, and get measuring.